solve, and graph inequalities. Let's review some of our symbols before we get started. This symbol means less than. This symbol means greater than. Now when we put those on the number line, we'll have an open circle or we'll use parentheses. Both of these means it's not equal to that point. Um, these are used with interval notation, um, but I'll show you more as we go along. Let's look at the next set. This actually means less than or equal to, and this means greater than or equal to. Now when we put that on the number line, it's going to be a closed circle because it can equal that number. Or we're going to use brackets, and these are really used in our interval notation. But like I said, I'm going to show you how we're going to use that in the next step. But before we go on, I want to tell you something that I learned when I was a kid to help me remember the less than or greater than symbol. When I was a kid, my instructor teacher told me, think of this as an alligator trying to eat the bigger number. So the number on this side is the smaller number, and the number on this side is the larger number. And that sure has helped me out in the years. Well, let's get started. Let's look at some. Solve and graph the inequality. So I'm going to solve this as if it was an equal sign here, okay? So I'm going to add 6 to both sides. So I get x is less than 11. Now let's remember for a second, less than is an open circle or parentheses. So to graph it, I'm just going to put my 11 in the middle. Now some of your instructors would like you to put a whole bunch of numbers in here and throw your 11 in there. It's really not necessary. The important number is 11. Now until you get good at this, I would write a number bigger than 11, which would be, for instance, 20, and smaller than 11, for instance, negative 9. It doesn't matter what these numbers are but we're going to use them to decide which side we're going to draw our line on to solve our solution, okay? So for the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my equation again. x is less than 11, and I'm going to put 20 in there. So is 20 less than 11? Nope. So I know that 20 is not in my solution set. Let's try negative 9. Is negative 9 less than 11? It sure is. So I know that negative 9 is in my solution set. So that tells me I'm going to draw an open circle and my arrow to the left. Now you want to make yours really nice and dark so that your instructor knows that's the graph. Now for some of you, you're going to be drawing a parentheses and to the left. Those mean exactly the same. So now my next step is I want to write this in interval notation. Okay, so what's happening on the left side? Well, the left side is going on and on and on and on to negative infinity. So I'm going to have parentheses, negative infinity, comma. Now this is going to 11, and it's a parentheses because it's an open circle. So that's my interval notation. Let's look at another one. Solve and graph the inequality. Well, I'm going to solve this as if it was an equal sign here. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. I'm going to get negative x as less than or equal to negative 2. Now, I don't want a negative x. I want a positive x. So I'm going to divide by negative 1. But remember, when we divide by negative 1, our symbol changes directions. Okay, so I'm going to end up having x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so let's graph that. But first, let's remember that when I have my greater than or equal sign, that's a closed circle, and I'm going to be using brackets, okay? So now let's graph this guy. So I'm going to put uh, positive 2, it's a positive 2, right here. Um, it doesn't matter, some of your instructors will have all kinds of numbers here. doesn't matter, but 2 is the important number. Until you get good at this, I suggest you put a number bigger than 2, like 4, and a number smaller than 2, for instance, 0. Now, the 0 and the 4, those numbers don't matter. It's the 2 that's really important. Now, I'm going to decide um, which way my solution set is going to go. Is it going to go to the left, or is it going to go to the right? So, 
my next step is I like to rewrite um, the original equation. Okay, so 3 minus x is less than or equal to 1. I'm going to put 0 in there. So 3 minus 0 is less than or equal to 1. 3 minus 0 is 3 is less than or equal to 1. Now is that a true statement? Is 3 less than or equal to 1? Nope. So I know that 0 will not be in my solution set. So let's try 4. So I'm going to have 3 minus x is less than or equal to 1. So 3 minus 4 is less than or equal to 1. So negative 1 is less than or equal to 1. So is that a true statement? It sure is. So I know that 4 is part of my solution. So I'm going to put in a closed circle at 2 and my solution set is 2 or greater. X is greater than 2. So I'm going to make that really dark there. For some of you, you'll be writing a bracket and your line to the right. Remember those mean the same thing. And my final step is to write interval notation. So I look and see what's happening on the left. Well, it includes two. So I'm going to have a bracket and a two, comma, means where is it going to? Well, it's going way, 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 way out to infinity. Okay? So comma, infinity. Now infinity is a parenthesis because we don't have a specific number for infinity. Let's try one more. Solve and graph the inequality. All right, we're going to solve this just as if these were equal signs. Seems kind of weird, but we're going to do it. I'm going to subtract 6 from every part. So 3 minus 6 is negative 3, is less than x, is less than negative 1. So once again, the important numbers that we want are negative 3 and negative 1. So let's put negative 3 on there and negative 1. Until you get good at this, I suggest you put numbers in there. Um, on the right of negative 1, between negative 1 and negative 3, and to the left of negative 3. Now one thing we do know is that there's an open circle at negative 3 and negative 1. But we're not sure what's happening. So I'm going to look at my original equation. 3 is less than 6 plus x is less than 5. Now let's put 0 in there. 3 is less than 6 plus 0 is less than 5. So 3 is less than 6 is less than 5. Well, first of all, 3 is less than 6. That's true. But 6 is not less than 5. So I know that 0 cannot be one of my solutions. So let's try negative 4. So 3 is less than 6 plus negative 4 is less than 5. So 3 is less than, now 6 plus a negative 4 is 2 is less than 5. Well, 2 is less than 5, but 3 is not less than 2. So I know that negative 4 is also not in my solution. So our last chance is negative 2. So we're going to have 3 is less than 6 plus negative 2 is less than 5. Well, 3 is less than 6 plus negative 2 is 4 is less than 5. Now this is a true statement because 3 is less than 4 and 4 is less than 5. So I know negative 2 is in my solution set. So actually, this is what my graph is going to look like because all the numbers between negative 3 and negative 1 will make that equation true. The other way we could write it, for some of you, you're going to write it like this. Okay. Now let's talk about the interval notation. Okay. So basically, we're going to write it just as you see it. What's happening on the left side? Well, it's going from negative 3. It doesn't include negative 3. And it's going to negative 1, but doesn't include negative 1. So that's my interval notation. For more inequality practice, go to www.pycrust.com and find all kinds of great worksheets with solutions. Also, check us out at Cafe Press for some great t-shirts. And finally, I'd like to thank Marmalade Moon for this great background.